not good enough to return to the game. So um, we'll see what tomorrow presents for him. Yeah, I didn't like it. Blind side, a little late, a little high. Unfortunately, I like I, I I had a chance to review it and the way he catches him, you know, Nate's stick goes up. So I believe that they probably made the right call on the two. Um, but don't love the hit. It's it's the type of hit that you know, whether it's really solid or just a glancing blow, it's a kind of the type of hit that the league's trying to get rid of, you know, so. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. The emotional game and Eric Johnson is a good leader and veteran player. Yeah. Is it safe to say that he's, he's got a little out of control there on the PK? He saw a possession call that lost his grip a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. And we'll move on from that, you know. It's just, hey, like, listen, for me, it's – there's times when I don't like what certain players are doing on the ice and I and I feel like I have to um, keep putting them out there, you know. And we'll talk about it after the game and look at a clip or two and, you know, because you're trying to win hockey games and, and you feel like those guys are your best options, you know, to put in certain situations. But as a team – whether it's turnovers, um, lack of commitment defensively, bad penalties. Like we've got to get to a point where our team understands just how important that is. So we've had, we've, you know, we've got a really good team and we play teams um, that we can get by with making a number of mistakes. But the message has to be sent to our team and they have to understand it, that if we're going to win against the top teams and that when you get in the playoffs, hey, I don't get, I don't care where we are in the standings when we get there. There's 16 teams in the playoffs that all deserve to be there and they're really good teams. There's not going to be a whole bunch of points separating those teams, especially in our division. Okay, so it's mistakes like that mistake that cost you games. And you're getting in the series and there's momentum. So to me, it's just, you know, we'll talk about it tomorrow. And it's just, we just felt like we needed to send a message there and not just to EJ, but to our whole group. And um, then we'll reset and get after it in Chicago. Well, I like their second period. And I didn't have a problem with our second period at all. I think we were out shooting them two to one. Um, great zone time, great chances until we went four and four. They scored, and then we got in penalty trouble, right? So they scored two power play goals, basically. Um, but I liked what we were doing in the second period. I thought that that's why it was frustrating, you know, I think for our team. But we felt like going into the room that we were doing some good things and in the, even in the first, you know. So I, I didn't have a problem with their game, the, 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 the special teams portion of it in the, in the second period. But this is one of the best power plays in the league, okay? Our guys understand that. They know that. We've talked about it. We've had meetings on it this morning. You're basically putting their best five guys on the ice, which are five of the top guys in the league, and especially in those positions that they play. Um, they've been together for a long time as a power play. So we're trying to keep them off the ice, not put them on the power play. And, th and they ended up, that that group got them the, the lead. And, and it was difficult to come back from. And you can't count on coming back from that all the time, you know? Yeah, sorry, go ahead. very well known for having your teammates back and being your life force. Do you believe in the obligation to help these guys? Um, yeah, I do. I mean... I think it it just depends on the situation. Like I think that you know, in regular season, like you 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 have to answer for things you do on the ice, you know. And just because the officials or Department of Player Safety doesn't um, deem something that bad, it, it's what your team's willing to accept as you know playing within the way that they see the game should be played. And if your teammates don't like it, 
It'll be something that another guy on another team does and they feel like uh, that was inappropriate, then they're going to try and get you down to the bell or, or, or force you into it. That's the way I see it. The, the game, the players discipline the game as much as the officials do. No, I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm not going to speak for Hall, but I have no problem with the way our guys handled it. Um, Greg, you, there was a play in the third, I think, where um, Garrett turned the puck over and Pasternak was standing behind him. You thought it was a little bit of yeah, great play. Yeah, what did you see there, and also just from that's com that that was started with a real good reload early and a great track. It's why you come back hard to help your defense. The more we help our defense as a group, um, the more we're going to play offense. The more time we give our D to break out with moving holdups, the harder we track, our D are more, are more able to stand up so we can transition the puck and keep on there two thirds of the ice. Um, the harder we get back in the D zone coverage and get our numbers down there, not just our 2D so we can get the puck stopped and get out. All those things, when we're doing that well, we own the ozone D zone ratio. Okay. If we're not, it becomes more even. Okay. So that to me is work ethic and commitment. Anyone can can track and work and check. That's that's being committed to the overall team game and the big picture. And that's where we that's where we have to get to. We have to keep getting better at it because that's what you need come playoff time. So that takes a bad balance or the puck pops out and it looks like it could be a breakaway and Nico covers for our D. You know, great effort, great commitment at a big time in the game that you, otherwise they're, you know, best scorer, one of their best scorers, one of the most talented guys in the league's going in for a great shot. Yeah. Well, he was good. I mean, he was competitive. He was on pucks. He was skating. He's big and strong. Same thing I see from him on most nights. Yeah. But six on five, he's he's been a part of that six on five the whole time. He's one of the net front presence guys on our power play. It's basically a version of our power play with an extra guy. And the extra guy is put at the net. So Val and Landy play down there. So it just makes sense to have him on there. And sometimes I use Comper there because he's a right shot and we can use him to take the draw if there's a draw on the right side. So those guys will interchange. Well, it's high on this year's list, you know, because you're trying to extend this streak you got going, guys don't want to lose. And like we were playing, like, like that was it. We were, a, we were committed to our team game tonight against a really good team. And, um, and we fall behind and we've already talked about the reasons why, in my opinion on that. And so to be able to just sort of stick with it and, but then it's the belief, right? The team, they, they, they're buying into what we have to do. I can hear the chatter on the bench. It's all the things that I would be saying. Um, and coaches are a part of that and the, and the leadership's part of it, but you can just hear what's going on on the bench and they're saying and, and trying to do the right things. It's not always perfect, but then to just stick with it, I can hear the belief, you know, and then we find a way to make it three, two, and then three, three, and, you know, we make a nice play in overtime to draw a penalty and, and, and we end up getting the win. So that that was not going to be easy because it wasn't like we were creating a ton of scoring chances, right? So guys can get discouraged and go the other way or start fragmenting and doing their own thing. And the more, more individualized the game gets, the worse it gets for you. You got to do it as a group and you got to stick to what you believe in as a structure. So I put it pretty high. Like that's probably the, like that's our biggest one of the year, I would say. Last one, Mike. No, he was treated here. Yeah, and then he, um, you know, he he was he was feeling better when he left the rink. I didn't see him leave the rink, but he left during the game. Yeah. Last one, your Yeah. What, uh, home. Well, Kale's winner, uh, great shot. Um, don't get me wrong, but the reason, in, in my opinion, why that goes in is the screen. Landy's parked right in front of him. He can't see it, right? So the read from Landy to say, okay, like he's getting it and he's attacking into a shooting position. I got to take the goalie's eyes away. Um, great play by Kale. Great shot by Kale. 
of a great screen by um, Landy. And uh, the tire, just a lot of great effort to keep the puck in, strike on pucks with good sticks. Puck pops out into the middle of the ice and Val's on an early reload and he picks it up, finds Kadri, and then the work didn't stop from trying to check the puck back. Landy's going hard to the net. Great play by Naz and Val and the guys that checked it back. I'm assuming it was probably Miko over there. I can't see on that side very well. Um, but um, yeah, so the whole group basically just working to try to keep the puck alive in the offensive zone, and then a great skill play is made, and it's in the back of the net. Thank you, Jared. Yep.